Good morning. Welcome to Church and Air. Um, so we're going to begin this service by, you know, praying, by speaking to our Father. So if you will, just bow your heart with me wherever you are. And let's just bless the name of the Lord. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you. Lord. The Bible says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And forget not his benefit. You know, he forgives all of my iniquities and heals me of every disease. So Lord, we honor you. We bless you. We thank you for another day. We thank you for another opportunity to gather. It's the day the Lord has made. We are glad and we rejoice in it. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your sure mercies. We thank you for seeing us through another week. And now we're in the start of another week. You know, it's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for the gathering of the saints. You said not to forget, not to forsake the gathering of the brethren. And even though this is like an online gathering, Lord, we still thank you because we're here, you know, unto the God, we're here gathered unto the Lord. And we just honor you, Lord. And we say, Blessed be your holy name. Lord, we pray, Lord, that even today, as we've come, Lord, to hear your word, that your word will transform us. The Bible says we should, be tra- we should not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by renewing of our minds. And so, Lord, we pray, Lord, that as we're here today and gather to hear your word and to fellowship, that our minds will be transformed, that we'll continue, you know, to be, con- to, to be conformed to the image of Christ day by day, that our path, because we are the righteous, it will shine brighter day by day. Lord, we commit this service into your hands, Lord. We ask, Lord, that every single person who's watching, every one of us who's listening, who's watching, we ask that we will see Jesus, you know, through the worship, through the sermon, and through and through to the end, Lord. That broken heart will be bound, that, that, that everyone who is, who is bound will be free, because with the Spirit of the Lord, there is liberty, so we declare your freedom. Lord, we declare your freedom, we declare your love, we declare your healing, and we declare hope, Lord. We thank you, Father, because even as we, 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 we leave church in court, as, in, as we even finish this service, Lord, we're going to carry your presence and we're going to abide in you through our week, Lord. You are first, you are last, you are all the way. And it is in you that indeed that we live, that we move and we have our being. So Lord, we honor you this morning. We put you first and we bless you, Father. And we declare this service open in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your holy name, Jesus. We come before your presence this morning. Oh, we come boldly, boldly, boldly to worship you. Boldly we come this morning. to Jesus for he is the king let your voices ascend to his throne on the wings of the music let your hearts be raised any one accord make his praise known give praise to Jesus for he is the king let your voices ascend to his throne. On the wings of the music, let your hearts be raised. Anyone a heart, make his praise known. Singing hallelujah. Singing hallelujah. We're singing hallelujah.
Jesus, just as I am, I come. Hallelujah. Oh, what amazing love. Thank you, Jesus, just as I am. So that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I have nothing else to eat for a king, except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. So I throw of my hand, I praise you again and again. All that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I've nothing else to keep for a king, except for a heart singing heart. Praise you again and again, cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else to be for a king, except for a heart singing hallelujah. One more time. Hallelujah. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I've nothing else to keep for my king. Except for a heart singing. Hallelujah. Come on, my soul, the 
Don't you get shy of me, lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, say, come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy of me? Lift up your soul. You got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. Don't you get shy of me? Lift up your soul. song of praise and lift up your song of adoration to the Lord oh throw up my hands and praise you again and again. 
amazing grace. What could we have done without you? <laughs> you stepped down into time to redeem man from shame, to redeem man from decay. Oh, what an amazing grace. What an amazing grace. The sound is always beautiful. We give you our worship. We worship you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for this morning. We give you praise. We thank you for your mercies towards us. We thank you for your loving kindness towards us, O oh God. Lord, we thank you that we who sat in the region of darkness, you caused your great light to shine upon us. Lord, I thank you for everyone this morning, O oh God, that is struggling with one thing or the other, that to this morning everyone would come to the realization of who we are in you, our identity in you, that what we have on the inside of us is capable of destroying depression, anxiety, or homosexuality is capable of destroying cancer and all sorts of debilitating diseases. Father, we thank you. We give you praise, O oh God, because we know your word will, will speak for us today. Your word will bring deliverance and healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Good morning and welcome to Church on the Air. Um, we bless God for, for his mercies. I'm glad to welcome all of you joining us online. Amen. So this morning I'll be looking at Believer's Authority. Um, but I just want you, I want you to also do me a favor as you're watching. There are many people that might benefit from what uh, the Holy Spirit might speak, who is going to speak through me this morning. And so I would like you to share, you know, share on the different social uh, media platforms so that people can be blessed. You can share on your WhatsApp status so that people can receive from the word of uh, the word of God also this morning and then I would like to invite you um, for our uh, Sunday service this particular Sunday you know it's we, we usually have service from 10 30 a.m. but this particular Sunday we have what is called the prophetic hub you know and it's an ad is an is a platform where the prophetic is taught and we will learn to to, to 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 be activated in the prophetic so I'd like to invite you I mean it is starts 4 p.m. Um, today so I'd like you to join us please look I look forward to welcoming you all thank you very much amen all right so this morning I am just going to to talk to us briefly on what I titled the believers authority um, what is the believers authority and um, uh, you know why why believers authority what's the source of believers authority Amen. So when we talk about authority, you, are, you know, we hear we are talking about delegated authority. We are talking about the fact that uh, we have been given delegated powers to act as God in the earth, you know. Amen. Because the Bible says, as he is in heaven, so we are meant to be in the earth, you know. And Jesus Christ was telling us, he said that if you have faith as little as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be that removed and be cast away. And the mountain will obey, not because, of, not because you have the ability in yourself to speak to the mountain or to push the mountain away, but because because of uh, who is behind this authority. Um, I, <clears throat> Kenneth Hagin always used this example of, um, of um, maybe a traffic warden that is at the, at, at the road, you know, and then directing traffic. And then you see a big truck, a massive truck coming towards uh, uh, the, the, the traffic warden. And then he lifts up his hand and says, stop. And the traffic warden stops. It is not because the man has the ability within him to hold a truck you know, to stop, but it's because of the vested power, you know, uh, on the on the traffic warden by the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So that's what gives the person the authority. So that's what we are going to look at this morning. I'd like us to look at um, um, uh, Matthew chapter eight, uh, 28. Um, I'll just read uh, verse, um, verse 18. You know, and then the, this is what the Bible says about authority. He said, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority. You know, in King James Bible, it is said all power. But in this, it is clear because that's actually what it is. All authority, which is um, what exousia. Amen. It is exousia. You know, the Greek word for it is exousia, which means delegated power. Um, which means that it said all authority. 
you know, has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Amen. Why was Jesus Christ given all this authority? Um, let me read the scripture that comes to my mind now. Um, I think, um, let me read Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 1. And it said that, He said, but to the son, let me see, I'm trying to look at, okay, um, let me just start from verse five. He said, for to which of the angels did he ever say, this is the question God was asking, you are my son, today I have begotten you again, and again, I will be I will be to him a father and he will be to me a son. But when he but when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, All let all the angels of God worship him. Talking about Jesus Christ. And <clears throat> and of all the and to all the and of all the angels, he says, Who makes his angel spirits and his ministers flame of fire? But to the son he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of your kingdom. This is the scepter of righteousness is a scepter of the son's uh, uh, authority. You know, the son has gained authority through inheritance, through the things that he went through, through the death on the cross. Jesus Christ acquired that authority. First of all, Jesus Christ stepped out of eternity into time. You know, he stripped himself of the glory that was his, you know, and he came into the sinful world to take the image of sinners you and I, and he died the death of the cross. And because of that, he triumphed over sin. And the Bible says, and another scripture in, um, in Hebrews, again, chapter seven, chapter five, it says, I read verse, um, let me see. Okay. Let me read verse, um, eight. He said, though he was a son, Jesus Christ, talking about Jesus Christ, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. So this is why Jesus Christ became the author of salvation to all, you know, why? Because he paid the price. He paid the price. And that's why in after his resurrection, you know, Jesus Christ can say that, all authority, all power has been given to me, you know, in heaven and on earth. And that's why the Bible in, 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 in Acts chapter, um, I think chapter, uh, uh, either 4 verse 12 or so, one of the scriptures, it said that there is no other name given under heaven where men can be saved except the name Jesus Christ. You know, that is the only name that guarantees us salvation. It is only in Christ that we have salvation. So today, if you are born again, you know, if you are born again, you have, you have, you, you have been given um, power to live the godly life. Amen. So the reason we can do a lot of things, that's why the Bible says, I can do all things, not by my own power, but through Christ who strengthens me. It is not about me. The Bible says, not by might, nor by power, but by the spirit of God. So the believer's authority, let's read another scripture in uh, Luke chapter 10. <clears throat> Sorry, Luke chapter 10, verse 18. He said, and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like, um, I'm reading 19 actually, it's where I'm going to, like lightning from heaven. So Satan has been defeated. Satan has been defeated, you know, and so behold, so this is what Jesus Christ is saying to you now, if you're born again Christian, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. What is he saying? You have become a brand new Christian. You have Christ living inside of you. The power of heaven, the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is that same power that is at work inside of your body. You know, your body has become the temple of the living God. So Christ dwells inside of you. And this is by implication of that. This is what he said. Behold, I give you the authority. Jesus Christ is saying the same thing, you know, to us. He has all the authority in heaven and on earth and beneath the earth he's got all the authority the bible says that he paid the price and whether thrones in colossians whether thrones whether dominions whether powers they are all under jesus christ and so he's saying to us that why 
behold, I give you the authority, exousia again, the Greek word, to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So this is what we have as Christians. This is what God is saying to us. I have given you Jesus Christ. He has paid the price. He became the author of eternal salvation. He is the one that, you know, the Bible says that your throne, O God, is forever and ever the scepter, the scepter of righteousness. You know, he's the authority of righteousness. Jesus Christ is the authority of righteousness. And so he's saying to us that because I have paid the price, because I have done all these things, I have gained dominance over all the powers. He's supreme. He's the supreme force that rules over the whole earth. And so he's saying that, behold, I give you power. So why are we afraid? Why do we go? Th why do we always go through, you know, the motion of deliverance? You know, I have to ascend spirits spirit uh, appearing again. I saw cockroach in my dream. I saw, um, I saw, I, I saw snake in my dream. I saw this and all that. But it's because we do not. And then we are running helter skelter looking for maybe men of God to pray for us. Yes, there are some things that we need people to pray for us, the authorities over us to pray for us. But every believer has been given, has been vested this authority. You have that authority. So he's saying that, behold, I give you. So God is behind authority. Behind God is a source of all authority. And this authority, we have it in Christ. The powers of hell understand and respond to the authority of God. The powers of hell respond. God, the, Satan knows, you know, Satan knows Jesus. And the tremble, and Satan trembles at the, at the mention of the name of Jesus. And Satan knows that, you know, for people, the Bible says that those that know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploit. But those that do not know their God shall be exploited by Satan. Satan will just come and tell you and just change your mood. You're probably in a good mood, you know, and then Satan just comes and tells you that your life is useless. And rather than take authority over that negative voice, you begin to fret. I think there's a, a, a scripture in 1 John chapter 4 verse 4. It says something like, you know, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Maybe I should just read it. 1 John, uh, 1 John chapter 4. First John chapter 4, verse 4, it says, okay, you are of God. So this is what God, the word of God is telling us. It says, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. You know, they are the world in the of the world you know so what is the word of god saying to us you know in in um the, the who are the ones in the world you know satan somehow acquired that uh, um, role when when adam fell and relinquished his authority that god had given him over the earth you know over 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 the systems and then relinquished it to satan but somehow you know but so he gave it to satan and so he who's in the world is is satan is satan and his cohorts you know, and so the Bible is saying that little children, God is calling us. He said, look, do not be afraid because he that is inside of you is greater than he that is in the world. So we must recognize that authority, you know, the greater one lives inside of us. And that because of that, we are not afraid of the powers of darkness. We are not afraid of the powers of darkness. We are not afraid of, you know, demonic forces that have been released, you know, um, in the earth to, 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 to distract us and to cause so much fear, you know, and trepidation within us so that we, we, we lack trust in God. So what God is saying is that he has delegated power is the authority that God has delegated to us as his children, just like the traffic warden man that I said, that is standing there not based on his own abilities, but based on the, the backing of heaven, based on the finished work of the cross, that which Jesus Christ has accomplished in the, on the cross. So whatever you're going through today, you know, maybe you're, you've been told that you have cancer. Maybe you've been told that you, you will not be able to give birth to a child. Maybe you have been told that, you know, maybe your child is hooked on crack and, 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 and it looks like, look, there's nothing that can be done about it. And you are so saddened. Maybe you have lost a loved one and you're wondering where is God in all this thing did he not say that i will live and i will not die you know 
you know, the power that God has vested inside of us is the power that enables us to walk in faith. This power also enables us to live the godly life so that if in every situation you are able to look Satan in the eye and say, Satan, throw your best shot. You know, I am going to stand on the word of God. I am going to stand because greater is he that is in me that is, than he that is in the world. I am an overcomer, not based on the things that I have done, but based on the finished work of the cross. I know my redeemer lived here, just like Job would say. And that, that and I, Paul would say, I know that which I have committed into the hands of God. And I know that he's able to, 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 to keep it and to perform it, to complete it. So I am not afraid of, you know, you look at depression in the eye and cast that demon out because God has given us authority. I give you authority to cast out demons. I give you authority to trample on, on serpents and scorpions, all manipulative tactics of Satan, you know, and none of these things shall hurt you because the same power that is in us helps us to be discerning. That power that has been given to us helps us to be discerning. You know, there are two types of powers. I'm, I'm not going to talk about uh, dunamis, you know, but it's one of the, it's a, it's a power that God has given to us also. Dunamis is, is, dunamis is different from exousia. You know, dunamis is not just delegated authority. Dunamis is the power of God by the, is the power of the Holy Ghost inside of us. He said, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You know, that's the plan. So we have that authority in Christ Jesus. Let's read um, Colossians chapter um, before we Colossians chapter um, Colossians chapter one, we will see also that a lot of things that God has given to us made available for us. Colossians chapter one, Let's see verse twelve and thirteen. Okay, Paul was talking. He said, "Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us." Who qualified us? The Father has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. There's a group called the, the, the saints in the light. We are part of, we have been qualified by the Father because of the finished work of the cross to be partakers of the saints in light. He said he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sin so that's what it is that's the deli that's the power that we have that is being delegated because of that you know because of the the authority that god has given to us we can rebuke evil thoughts you can rebuke that thought that is moving you towards fornication you can rebuke that thought that is moving you towards adultery you can rebuke that thought that is bringing depression and anxiety and and unsettling your life you can rebuke that thought that is, that, that that is telling you that your life is useless your life cannot amount to anything the bible says that we can do all things through christ who dwells in us you know it's not by our own strength or our own power but by the spirit of christ you know within us we are able to overcome so we have been delivered by from the powers of darkness so when you see patterns a lot of times you know you come into a place and you 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 see that you know um so there are some demonic uh, powers that are moving around all these elemental uh, uh, demons and all that what do you do you Beat them in the name of Jesus. There is a name that is higher than every other name. It is the name of Jesus. That is our authority. Our authority is in the name of Jesus, in the blood of Jesus, the blood of his cleansing. The blood of Jesus cleanses us. So when we come in those names, in that name, you know, everything bows. The Bible says that every tongue, every tongue, every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is the Lord. Even in your life, as you allow yourself to exercise the your authority that you have in the believer amen so we are casting out um powers that are not you know that that are, that are not of god that tend to put us down so if you are a believer it is time to rise up and to take up your place you know and begin to fight powers that are, are set towards destroying your life amen so um i also read another scripture in um in 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 um, romans chapter 5 <clears throat> Romans chapter 5 I think verse 17 let me see 
Okay. Let me read from verse 16. Christ, I can see. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment <coughs> which came from the offenses resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many <coughs> offenses resulted in justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned through one, much more those who uh, receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus. This is how we reign. Reigning in life is reigning in Christ Jesus. It is the ability, it is the, the fact that, you know, when you got born again, you received a position. That position is called righteousness. And that is the path that we are meant to walk, the path of righteousness. And that we are meant to reign. Reigning here also is, it speaks of dominion, you know, where we, we take authority over principalities and powers, over demonic forces. Amen. We are able to overcome them. So that's what the Bible in Romans chapter 5 verse 17 says. We are to reign with Christ. Why do we have the right to reign with Christ? I read another scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I think verse 17. It says, but, but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. You know, I mean, if you read um, the whole of that scripture, it's talking about, do you not know that your bodies are the temple of, of, and, uh, of the living God and members of Christ? You know, why should you uh, yield your members which are upon the earth as instruments of unrighteousness? And then it's telling you here that he that is joined to Christ is one spirit. And so that's what gives you the legality. That's what gives us the legality because we are one spirit. We have that ability to overcome sin. It begins to say flee immorality. So because of that, because you are joined with Christ, you have the ability to do what to flee immorality, every sin, you know, and all sorts of other things, you know, uh, vices that, that that the enemy, you know, uh, places before us, you know, because because you see, sin has some pleasure, sexual immorality has some pleasure, and other other issues, sins, you know, maybe you have to lie because you have to lie because you have to save your face and stuff like that. So those things they have their own benefit, but those benefit, the Bible says, there's a way that leads to. That looks like that leads to um, there's a part that seems right, so to say. I'm trying to paraphrase it, but the end of it is death. So that's what God is saying to us. But God has given us the the innate ability, you know, to be able to look Satan in the eye and say no, um, throw your best shot, you know, and say and and stop Satan in his tracks. Amen. So the same um, way we are looking at. Um, I read one scripture and then we 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 will probably round up from that Ephesians chapter. Um, let me see. Ephesians chapter 6. Yes. Ephesians chapter 6. I start reading from verse 10. He said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. How do you, how do you stand against the powers of hell? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles. The devil has wiles. He has tactics. If there's anything the devil has, it's, the, it's patience. devil can track you and wait for you for 20, 50 years to fall you, to, 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 to fall you down. You know, and that we must be smart because we are involved in the battle of nerves. So we must keep insisting. When Satan went to Jesus, Jesus kept saying, it is written, it is written. It is written and we must adopt the same method of being resilient, of being having a strong resolve and saying that, you know what, we insist on what the word of God says. Yes, I see patterns in the natural. I see patterns that are, are threatening. Oh, my grandfather died at 50. Oh, my, my, my mother, my father died at 50. But, you know, and I'm seeing signs, you know, I'm getting to 50. I'm seeing all the signs uh, of all the things that they struggle with diabetes, blood sugar, blood, blood pressure, high cholesterol and all those things so what you need to do you arm yourself with the word of god destroy cholesterol in the natural by doing exercise because the bible says there's a profit that comes with bodily exercise you know that's not the ultimate but essential is that profit that comes with bodily exercise you know so you do your bodily exercise and you stand you do your spiritual exercise confession of the word you keep insisting on what the word of god says that's how we fight this battle that's how we fight this battle. So Satan has tactics, he has wiles, but we must put on 
the whole armor of God. What is the armor of God? The armor of God is the word of God. The word of God it has to, is that you may be able to stand against the wiles and of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the devil. You may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand. You know, so there is an evil day for each one of us. Jesus Christ did not promise us that, oh, when all the gospel that we hear these days, when you just get born again, everything becomes rosy, everything becomes okay, and you, are, you, you know you don't have to go to crisis. Jesus Christ said, in the world there will be tribulation. Those are the evil days. So there will come an evil day in each and every one of us. But on that evil day, the Bible says, he that fails in the day of adversity, his strength is small. So what do we do? You know, we build up strength. We build up capacity by the study of the word. By You know, it is the word of God that gives, is the agency of deliverance is the word. The agency of deliverance is the word. It is the word that brings deliverance to us. So as we keep standing on the word of God and keep insisting on the word of God and keep insisting that Satan, um, we, we, I throw your best shot. I'm not going to be moved. Though I feel sad, I, I feel an overwhelming um, sense of sadness around me. I can't place it, but I begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. I begin to charge up myself in the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, He that prays in tongues, pray not unto man, but unto God. How be it in the Spirit, He utters mysteries. As you begin to charge up yourself, the enemy, you know, you, you begin to, you, the Bible says, edifies, the person edifies himself. You're building up yourself, a colossal spiritual building inside of your, stretching the capacity of your spirit man. It is being enlarged. It is being enlarged. And then suddenly signals begin to come from, 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 from heaven. You know, signals begin to come from heaven because inside of you is that intuition, the capacity to pick signals from heaven. So as you adjust your antenna back to heaven, you know, you will begin to pick signals. God will begin to comfort you and God will give you a word that, you know what, uh, do this maybe take a fast or do this and do that things are going to be fine i am with you i will never leave you nor forsake you so this is how we overcome you have exousia inside you know exousia is a delegated authority that has been vested upon given to us as the children of god to be able to take our rights and privileges to say this is what belongs to me good health belongs to me Poverty is not my portion. And I'm not talking about materialism, you know, here. I'm talking about the real prosperity of the soul that the Bible said, I wish uh, above all, in, above all, that you prosper, you know, and be in health, even as your soul prospers. This is the prosperity we are talking about, that deliverance is my portion. Um, good health is my portion. Poverty is not my portion. I have been, you know, I, 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 I protection is my portion portion so when the enemy rises up you are standing upon the word of god and saying that this is mine i take my portion i take that which belongs to me you know and that's what i i feel in my heart that the holy spirit is saying to us this morning you know that we have to rise up there has to be some form of aggression that is coming from our inside and he's saying you know what i'm taking authority my business must prosper my my life must make sense you know i must walk with the lord i must know him i i will i put myself under to study the word of god even though i don't feel like studying it but i have that capacity to be able to study because i i, I can have understanding because I, I you begin to pray the Pauline prayer that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened like Paul was praying and then the heavens begin to open upon us the heavens begin to open upon us and as the heaven opens upon us you know we'll have visitations angelic visitations you know because we have a right to protection we have a right to deliverance we have a right to all the rights and privileges that heaven has bestowed upon us based on the finished work of the cross so I just want to encourage you this morning that no matter what you see stand on the word of God the Bible says, whoever looks into the perfect law of liberty, the law, the law of God is a perfect law of liberty and, 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 and continues therein. So we need, there's that continuance, there's that continuance that we need to continue in the word. And as we continue in the word, deliverance, Satan will leave us. 
as Jesus kept insisting, it is written, Satan, you shall serve the Lord your God. It is written, Satan, this is and that. Satan left him for a season. And Satan will always leave us for a season when we insist on the word of God. Amen. So I, I pray that the Lord keeps you, that whatever you are going through, you know, this season, it is not the definition of who you are. Your identity is hid in Christ and God. And so I want you, I pray that, that the dominion seat of God inside of you, that will be charged at you, that the Lord will stir it up like waters, you know, will stir it up, will stir it up. And you will behave like that man who was sitting by the river, by the, 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 that river of Siloam. You know, when he, he was waiting for, for the water to be stirred. But Jesus Christ says, step into the water. How do we step into the water? By beginning to charge ourselves. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Still move your body, every part of you. You know, um, we do not walk by feelings. We walk by, by the word of God. And I pray that you will not allow yourself to be cheated by the enemy by waiting for the water to be stirred up. But that you would rise up in faith and begin to stir the water of faith in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless and keep you and, and, and may he uphold you and bring deliverance to you and salvation to you and your family. And for those of people who are perhaps watching who have not received the gift of salvation because there's a starting point at that starting point is when you say Lord Jesus Christ come into my life and be Lord over my life. And if you have not said that prayer you have a chance to do that today because God is in the business of saving people and delivering them. So I want you to pray that prayer with me. Lord Jesus Jesus, I have heard your word and I know I am a sinner. Right now, I confess my sins and I ask that you come and be Lord of my life. Save me, O God, and be the savior of my life. I am born again. I have a new life in Christ Jesus, in the name of Jesus. For as many people that have said this prayer, Lord, I pray that they would come to understanding of what this, the assurance of salvation, the meaning of it will hit them like lightning and they will begin to walk in these realities in the name of Jesus. God bless you all. And please, once again, join us this evening at 4 p.m. for Prophetic Hope. We look forward to seeing you. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for staying with us up till this time. We believe that you've been blessed by that powerful word. We believe that the Holy Spirit has touched your hearts in ways that it has never happened before, that this word has made a special impact, that you've had a specific instruction from the Lord today to do the will of God and to just obey Him, following every instruction that has been sent by His servants. So now we're going to take our offerings. Um, the details are scrolling on the screen for the tithers and also, of course, for the offering. It's the same account number um, scrolling now on the screen. And it's just our heart's desire that those of us who continually give, that the Lord will replenish you, every single one of us, that everyone who is sowing in tears will reap in joy that those who do not have enough, that the Lord will supply even much more. As many who, has given, who are giving widows' mites this morning, that God will remember you in a special way, and your needs will be met, and all of your heart desires also will be granted in Jesus' name.